Welcome to Monday, January 25th, 2021. Well, this week is going to start off a little chilly. A cold start to the week across the whole region. We're going to have some unsettled weather. There's going to be a little bit of snow today and Tuesday. Not a lot, but a little bit, especially for folks in Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, some parts of far southern Wyoming as a small Pacific wave comes through, followed by another one tomorrow. Now, southwest winds will pick up midweek. What will happen is we'll start the week cold. We'll have a warm up mid to late in the week. Then the weekend will bring a trough in similar type of trough to what we've seen here lately. Not a big storm system, but enough to bring the snow to the high country again. A little bit of snow to the plains, maybe not unlike what has happened this weekend in some areas. It's going to be an active pattern for the U.S. If you're going to be traveling across the lower 48 states over the next week or two, well, there's going to be plenty of winter weather going across the USA as the Pacific is throwing out storms. When the Pacific throws out storms, the U.S. weather pattern gets a lot more busy. You can see a broad trough of low pressure with the jet stream pattern today moving through the western United States. This little wave right here is what's going to produce snow over portions of Colorado and Kansas and Nebraska today heading into the Corn Belt and Midwest with the northwest edge of the system getting to about here. But it's going to be a system mainly bringing the heavier snow to the nation's midsection. But you can see there's another system right here coming in behind it that's going to move in tomorrow it's a weak storm it's just not well put together but it'll bring another round of snow to the mountains of colorado a little bit of light snow onto the plains before it heads off to the midwest corn belt and great lakes again right behind the other system so there are going to be two systems moving across the midwest this guy here instead of coming into the Rockies, will come down more towards the coast. That's going to bring more rain to California. And what it'll do is it'll put a southwest flow into the region. But between now and this is for by Thursday evening, this is today through Thursday evening, you can see we've got some pretty good snow in eastern Nebraska, some light snows over parts of southeast Colorado. So there's going to be a little bit of needed moisture coming into here with lighter amounts east of the divide elsewhere. Look at the mountains of California, Nevada, Utah, Idaho uh, doing well. Look at the Sierras. They really need it. So that'll be good news there. In fact, the rainfall forecast for the West Coast is as good as it's been in months here over the next week or two. With these systems coming off the West Coast and traveling through the region, that's going to keep the weather pattern active. Now here is... Thursday morning, here's that southwest wind. So instead of winds coming in from the north, southwest winds will bring in mild air for midweek. Now as we go forward into Friday night and Saturday, you can see that that trough begins to move inland. While not very well put together, there will be a wave coming in overnight Friday and Saturday into the Rockies and High Plains. So this will bring a return of mountain snow, probably some snow showers onto the plains. A very similar situation to what we've had here recently. Small weather systems coming off the west coast, not becoming very large in the Rockies, becoming a bigger storm as they head into the Midwest and eventually the northeastern United States. You can see over the next 10 days, the heavier precipitation along the west coast. They're still going to need more to, to catch up from the dry conditions this winter, but this is really good news for the Sierras of California. California picking up some needed rains and some of that moisture spreading inland. You can see that moisture picks up again as you get into the nation's midsection. And as we have seen all winter, if you go along and east of the Continental Divide, yes, there's some precipitation here, but not as much as there is to the west, not as much as there is to the east, as that is a typical La Nina pattern to where these storm systems just are moving too quickly to become too organized enough to get us into a long prolonged upslope. That's just not in the cards yet. Now going out further, this is 10 days. This is for the 3rd and 4th of February. We actually have a stronger load near the Four Corners region, a broad area of low pressure being forecasted by the models. So this will be a system to keep an eye on as we get towards the early to middle portions of next week. So the weather certainly has gotten more busy and will stay busy into that first week of February. Over the next three and a half days, you can see the snow activity picking up here. Parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Northern Illinois gonna see some wintry weather again. Could see some real heavy snows here over the next 24 to 48 hours for Lincoln and Omaha and Des Moines. So if you're gonna travel I-80 
watch for that here over the next couple of days. Now, as we go out a little bit further, if we were to do the 10 day snowfall forecast for the US, you can see that Canada, the United States, looking a lot more like winter than we've seen in a while, as we'll probably have a lot more winter here in late January and into the month of February than we've had all winter so far. Going back to the sea surface temperatures and our La Nina pattern, and I wanna show you what the changes have been going back since the 20th of October. It's quite remarkable to see what the sea surface conditions across the globe are doing. These are changes in sea surface temperatures over the last 90 days or so, going back to the latter half of October. Notice that most of the central and northern and eastern Pacific Basin has really seen a big decrease in temperatures. Most notably, it's gotten colder up here. It's gotten colder along the west coast. Now we have, and this is a, a little bit of a warm up since this fall, and this is that La Nina region. Even though it's showing a warm up here, don't be fooled, temperatures in this area are still colder than average. We still have La Nina. Where it's been remarkable is the change up here. Then if you look at elsewhere across the globe, the North Atlantic has cooled off. Parts of the Indian Ocean have really cooled off. Big drop in sea surface temperatures in the Southern Pacific, Southern Indian Ocean. And as you get elsewhere between Africa and South America. So the global sea surface temperature pattern over the last three months has really dropped. If we were to look at where we are now with the sea surface temperature anomaly, you can see it's not as cold in that area there, but this is still a very robust La Nina. But we definitely are seeing more and more sea surface temperature pattern changes. This continues to look more and more like 2011 and into 2012 when the Pacific really cooled off. And as we know, when the Pacific gets cold, it's a dry signal, especially heading on into spring. So it's something that we're going to continue to keep an eye on. Speaking of sea conditions, this is really interesting. This is a cross section in the North Atlantic. In the North Atlantic is a big area of the globe to where you get, build up a lot of cold water from Greenland, from the higher latitudes near the Arctic Circle. And the oceans go through these cycles of deeper waters that are colder to thinner waters that are colder. And what I'm showing you here is a graph that the water is getting colder and over a deeper water column in the North Pacific. If you go back to 2004 to where we are right here, you can see that the depth of the cold water in the North Atlantic has gotten deeper. Now, why is that important? Well, we'll talk about this in later podcasts, but there's a lot going on in the ocean basins is really what I wanna point out here. And that is to be expected after solar minimums. And I think it's gonna be a, a real big player in the next one to three years and maybe longer in terms of what happens with the weather and the climate across the globe. And then we have to figure out how does that affect us regionally? Have yourself a great Monday. We'll see you all on Tuesday.